Greetings everyone. Today we're going to explore graphing exponential functions. Now you definitely want the foldable for this as we have some unique tables and graphs provided. Um, first, let's talk about exponential growth and decay. What are these graphs going to look like? What do they represent? And in the real world, it's such a good tie in here. Um, when we talk about a fantastic bank account where you can earn interest on top of interest, um, depending on the type of account, that can show some exponential growth. Population, we're familiar with this in North Dakota when we had the oil boom. Um, for example, the population of Williston grew exponentially for a little while. When we talk about radiation, um, that is a good example of exponential decay. Even more relatable, the depreciation of your car. When you buy a car, it's worth so much, you drive it off the lot, the value goes down, the value goes down, and very quickly, it just sort of stays as a very low value. Carbon dating is another example you might have heard of that represents exponential decay. Now, here's where you'll want your note sheet. Let's talk about the exponential model. We have a formula or an equation that we're gonna repeatedly use. That formula is y equals a times b to the x. That x is your exponent. Remember at any time, if you need to pause and jot things down and then listen, please do so. Let's talk about the pieces. Very, very important. What does every variable mean? A is the starting value, or you might hear me say initial value. And if it's the starting value, it's also going to be your y-intercept. B, B is your growth or decay factor. You're gonna hear me use that word a lot, the growth or decay factor. Now, what type of number it is? determines what kind of function this is. So if B is greater than one, if the factor is greater than one, like 1 1.5, 2, 10, then it's exponential growth. If your B value is between zero and one, not zero or one, but in between, right? It's just less than, just greater than. Um, then you're dealing with exponential decay. So if I have a B value of one half or three fourths or one tenth. X is the amount of time. What are we talking about? Are we talking about months, days, years, seconds? Um, you'll be given that information in the scenario. And then of course, Y is what we're trying to solve for. A couple pictures. So in this example, you don't need to necessarily jot anything down here. If you have it on your foldable, you'll notice that this B value is two, two is greater than one. So if anything in your notes, identify that this represents growth, which makes sense, right? I'm curving and going up, I'm increasing. Whereas this B value is one half, so that represents decay. Well, visually it makes sense, right? I'm going down as I trace the graph. Now here's where you definitely want the foldable. Um, we're going to go through and identify the pieces of this function, and then we're going to use our tables to graph it. So starting off, let's identify the pieces. The B value, the base, it's the base under the exponent is one third. Therefore, this is decay. It's decay because the factor is one third. One third is between zero and one. The initial amount though, What's the A value in front here? What factor could I put out front? I could put a factor of one. It's kind of like, a, and this is very, very generic, but remember when we did graphed lines, linear functions, if it just said X plus five, my slope was one. So we're just thinking what factors in front and it's one. That means my Y intercept, my initial value is one, so we can plot that dot on the y-axis. Now let's talk about this table. We are going to use the same five x values we used when graphing lines. We're gonna replace x in our function with these values and calculate. So for example, I'm gonna start with zero because zero is easier. If I have one third but I'm placing it to the zero power. What's anything to the zero power? 
1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. And look at that. We already graphed that dot 0, comma 1. So you actually don't have to show me any work for the 0 if you understand how the initial amount works. Let's try another one. Let's go positive. 1 third to the positive first power. Well, anything to the first power is itself. So I'm going to have 1 third. So write 1 up a third. Yes, you're going to have to graph fractions. Just make an estimation. Let's take care of squared, or to the second power. The function is 1 third, but instead of x, let's go to the second power. This is power of a quotient, meaning we distribute. So it's 1 squared over 3 squared. What is 1 squared? 1. What is 3 squared? 9. So at 2, I'm at 1 ninth, which is a tiny, tiny amount. It's going to be hanging out right above the x-axis. All right, let's deal with these negatives. We're going to have 1 third to the negative first. Now, here's why we need to remember our exponent rules. What do negative exponents do to my fraction? Right? They kick the top to the bottom and the bottom to the top. So what they do is they completely flip my function. If I flip it, it becomes a positive exponent, and anything to the first power is itself. So at negative 1, we're at 3. See how this is making sense? It's looking like a decay function. Let's try one more. 1 third, but this time it's to the negative second. Well. The negative flips it, right? Now my exponent's positive. Let's distribute that squared. What's 3 squared? 9. What's 1 squared? 1. We've got an answer of 9. At negative 2, at negative 2, I'm at 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, let's connect our dots. Now, this is very specific. You can see the curve, right? The high point almost goes straight up, and the bottom part cruises along the x-axis. Now, in this particular lesson, all of our functions are going to be basic like that. This isn't true for all graphs, just for today's lesson. So think of it, put your, stick your finger and your thumb, your, your thumb out. Excuse me, stick, yeah. Make an L. Make an L with your hand. See how that looks like the L you make with your hand? So it's either going to look like that with your left or your right hand. Let's try another one. First, let's identify the parts. The B value, the base is 2. Therefore, it's growth because a factor of 2 is greater than 1. The initial amount, the A value, is 3. Let's go graph that right away. What that means is when I plug in 0, I'm going to get 3. I don't even need to show work if you can memorize that. I will show work here, though. That means 3 times 2 to the 0. What's anything to the 0 power? 1. What's 3 times 1? 3. Okay, so you can kind of see how that works out. But again, if you understand that, you do not have to show me work. Let's jump to 1 next. 3 times 2 to the first, which is 3 times 2, which is 6. At 1, we're at 6. Let's go to 2. 3 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. At 2, we're at 12. That means we're up here. Let's backtrack. 3 times 2 to the negative 1. Now, technically, this is 2 over 1, right? Where is that negative 1 going to move my 2? To the denominator. That means it's going to become a 1 half. How do I multiply fractions straight across? I'm using color here so I can associate that. Now, you can use your calculator to help, but I expect in my class to have improper fractions. We need to work on those. And I expect some work shown 
to see that you understand your exponential rules. So at negative one, I'm at three halves, which is about one point, or which is 1.5. Take care of the last one, three times two to the negative two. All right, I'm just gonna leave it as three over one right away. The two gets kicked to the bottom and it still has a squared on it. Well, what is two squared? Four. How do we multiply fractions? Straight across. So you have to be well versed in your exponent rules and your fractions. Let's graph at negative two. I'm at three fourths, which is 0.75. Let's connect our dots. So make an L with your hand, with your thumb and your finger. It would look like this. It cruises along the X axis on one side and shoots straight up on the other side. Do not be careful. Don't have your arrow go down. That's incorrect. If you cross that x-axis, I'm gonna to have to mark that wrong because we're not going to. We'll never have a negative y value in our lesson today. Let's take a look at another one here. Let's start off with our b value. Our base, our factor is 1 half, which means that we have a decay function because 1 half is between zero and one. Our initial amount is two. So let's take care of that right away. Let's plot that. If my initial value is 2, my a value is 2, that is my y-intercept. When I plug in 0, I'm going to get 2. I'm okay if you don't show work on that one. But what I do want to see work on is for the other four values. Let's start off with 1. 2 times 1 half to the first. Well, anything to the first power is itself. So what's half of two? One. So I'm at one, one. That makes sense. It's decay, it's going down as I go to the right. Looking good, all right. Two times one half to the second. Well, that means I'm distributing that two to the top and the bottom. What's one squared? One. What's two squared? Four. I'm going to make that initial to a fraction. How do I multiply fractions? Straight across. That gets me to 2 fourths, which is the same. You do have to reduce 1 half. So at 2, I'm at 1 half. That makes sense, right? Your answer should make sense with the fact that it's decay. All right, let's go to negative 1. 2 times one half to the negative first. The negative flips my B value. So now I have two over one to the first. Well, that's just a two, right? Two to the first is two. Two times two is four. Nice easy value, negative one, four. And that makes sense with my graph. Negative two. You guys, look at those y values. Can't you make some assumptions here? If these are my x's and these are my y's, look at my y's. Look at how they're changing. So two, one half to the negative two. The negative flips it. Okay, I'm, I'm counting this as that two. First of all, I'm just carrying that over. Let's take this piece. We're gonna flip it and distribute the squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1. Let's multiply straight across. 2 times 4 is 8. At negative 2, we're at 8. Do you guys see the patterns we've been making? We haven't paid attention to this. My, let me just show you this. I'm going to try to highlight. My factor is a half. 8 cut in half is 4. 4 cut in half is 2. 2 cut in half is 1. 1 cut in half is 1 half. Look back at the previous examples. They all have that pattern. They're either doubled or they're cut in half or they'll be cut in thirds or they'll be tripled. You're going to see a pattern that's going to help you so much. Let's connect our dots. Remember, it needs to look like the L shape of your hand. Cruise along the X axis and go straight up. All right, quick review. Let's just talk about if these are growth or decay. We don't need any writing. This would be growth. Point three would be decay. Three fifths would be decay, but more importantly, put a star by this one. Seven halves is growth. OK, 
okay? A lot of people see a fraction and think decay. No, 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 no. 7 halves is 3.5. 3.5 is greater than 1, so it's growth. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you're looking at the value correctly. All right, so those graphs, key things. Don't turn it off yet, okay? Um, please make sure to show table work. Okay, I'm going to send stuff back to you if I don't see that table work. I want to see that you understand how to use exponent rules specifically with negatives and fractions. And I want to see that you understand just basic fraction work. All right. Make sure to check out Google Classroom to see what the task is for this lesson. Let me know if you have any questions. Visit the Sabre Center if needed. And until next time, have a good one.